good evening and a warm welcome to everyone thank you so much for stopping by i'm sure that today's topic is a very interesting topic and by the end of this session each of us will know at least a gist of what article 19 is speaking about so today's topic is article 19 of the indian constitution it is a very vast topic and i'm sure that we cannot cover the entire topic and at least we can know what article 19 speaks so article 19 has six freedoms to discuss so article 19 has six freedoms we'll study each freedom in detail article 19 guarantees all these six rights to all the citizens of india right to freedom and speech and expression right to assemble peacefully without arms right to form associations or unions or cooperative societies right to move freely throughout the territory of india right to reside and settle in any part of the territory of india right to carry out any profession or to carry out any occupation or trade all these rights are applicable only to the citizens of india and only them so now without further ado let us start off with the freedom of speech and expression that is the first freedom which is discussed under the article 19 so according to this, every citizen is free to express his or her views, opinions, and beliefs. How do they express it? They can express it by word of mouth, paintings, pictures, or any other means. Even the internet communication is allowed. What does internet communication mean? You can post whatever you want to post on your social medias, as in Instagram, you can tweet in Twitter, you can post anything in Facebook, even that is a form of communication which can be made. This freedom is available only for the citizens of India. Of course, all the freedoms which are discussed under Article 19 is applicable only for the citizens of India. So according to the Supreme Court, SC means Supreme Court, the following is included under the freedom of speech. Right to propagate, one's view as well as others view which means you can express your views and you can express others views also freedom of press and freedom of commercial advert advertisement means which is confined to the uh, media they can express whatever they have it should be lawful and it should be obedient in the eyes of law right against tapping of telephone conversation uh, anyone who has the authority to tap, as in the government people, just for the evidence purposes, they can tap a telephone conversation, right to telecast and so on. Even the telecasting is uh, to the media people. Anything which has some, which has the obedient rules and is uh, lawful in the eyes of law can be done. This is about freedom of speech and expression. The second one is freedom of assembly. So according to this, Every citizen has the right to assemble peacefully and without arms. Now, what does arms mean here? Guns or any machineries or any harmful things is called as arms here. So there is an exception. We'll discuss it now. It includes right to hold public meetings, demonstrations, processions, and religious gathering. All this is rightful. Exercised only on public land and not on private land, which means you can only go on a road or in a park or in a uh, public place where you can do all the assemblies. You cannot go to someone else's property and you cannot assemble there and tell that this is my freedom and I have uh, the, you know, I have the audacity to do it. No, that is not true. You can only do the assemblies in only public lands. Okay, assemblies also, strike is also one of the assembly, right? Is right to strike a freedom no it is not a fundamental right at all strike itself means it is going to create some violence it is going to create some threat to the society so the right to strike is not a fundamental element and it is not one of those freedoms which is discussed under the article 19 of the indian constitution all the assemblies which is happening should be peaceful and should not hurt the sovereignty integrity unity and secularity of the india which means it should be lawful and it should not hurt any uh, and also it should not hurt the public order and the public peace all these keeping in mind a, per, a person or a group of people can do the gathering rightfully so there is a very important topic to discuss under this freedom of assembly 
it is brandition brandition of arms which means open display of arms you cannot openly display arms in a in an assembly uh, it is not at all allowed i'm sorry this So as I said, there is an exception here in the freedom of assembly. It is about the Sikh community. So there is a question asked here. Sikh community has the audacity to brandish the arms in public. It means in public. How is this? So as I said, any people can do a religious gathering. So Sikh, while doing their religious gathering, has the right to practice their religious practices. So they, they worship their arms. Same in the in same in the form of tripan also. What does tripan means? Tripan is nothing but the knife which they use. They worship them, and it is one of their religious practices. Um, they can do this because they are not going to cause any threat or violence to the society. So this is totally allowed. It is same in the case. Okay, so this is a exception. Which, which can be discussed in the freedom of assembly. And there is something else. Okay. Now section 144 also is a form of assembly, right? Section 144. What does section 144 means? Government imposes section 144 when it is given out, which means only four people. A group of four people can stand and not more than that can stand and discuss in a public area. It is also a form of assembly. Why is this done? It is done for the sake of public peace and public order. If there is some chaos happening in the society, they, they give out section 144. This section is a preventive order which comes under reasonable cause of restriction. Even the community comes under the reasonable cause of uh, restriction, which means they have their own reasons to practice their religious practices and they can open up, uh, they can worship arms and they, they can um, brandish the arms. That is a re reasonable form of uh, restriction. So even section 144 comes under that. They should be considered as a valid order which is passed by the government because they're not going to cause any threat or they're not going to cause any violence to the society. All these sections, uh, as in section 144, if it is imposed, it is definitely for the welfare of the society. So this is all about freedom of assembly. Now moving on to the third freedom, freedom of association, which means every citizen is free to, free to form groups, associations, political parties, and cooperative societies and stuff. But one cannot form any association for any illegal purposes, which means you cannot come up with an idea and tell that I am interested in uh, smuggling and, I'm, and I'm, I'm interested in mafia. I want to start up an association for this. Uh, can I do this? No, because it is definitely unlawful and it is going to cause threat to the society, which in turn becomes a violence. According to the Unlawful Activity Prevention Act of the year 1967, the government has the audacity to ban unlawful organization and their assets can be frozen too. It, they can just walk up to any unlawful uh, activity, uh, you know, any, any unlawful associations and they can just freeze all their documents. For example, as I said, uh, terrorist organization, Naxalites, smuggling, mafia, all these are unlawful. You can for, open up a law firm, you can open up a tuition. If that, th those all are, uh, you know, constitutes the association which are lawful. So this is all about freedom of association. Now comes the freedom of movement. Every citizen is free to move within India, which means he can move within the territory of India and India only. Okay, Article 21 uh, discusses about going out and coming back to India, which we are not going to discuss in. Uh, you know, elaborated form here. We are only dealing with Article 19. Just for the information, I told that Article 21 deals with abroad, uh, going out there and coming. So Article 19 has the freedom of movement, which means every citizen has the audacity and can move um, uh, inside the territory of India. Okay. So this underlines the ideology that India is a one unit and as far as the citizens are concerned, that is what I told now. 
A citizen of India can move anywhere, but not to the restricted area. What are the restricted areas? Military camp, you know, classified secret area, and biospheres, or if there is any restriction, if there is a restriction board, and if you want to enter that, that becomes unlawful. That, that, that cannot happen. This restricted area will not cover under the freedom. You cannot just move to a restricted area. You cannot just move to a military camp wherein you are not supposed to go and, and you, you cannot claim telling that I have the freedom to move. It is discussed under Article 19. No, that is not happening because it is clearly mentioned that it is a restricted area. So you should not be moving there. Else you can go anywhere. So curfew. Now, what about curfew? Is curfew a freedom of movement? That is what we are going to discuss here. Okay, now. Just a moment. Okay. Curfew cannot be uh, considered as a violation because it is an executive police action. Curfew to happen, police will have the audacity to make the curfew and it has some reasonable grounds to happen. You know, as it is usually an executive police uh, action, it is interest. It has the interest in the reasonable ground, and you know, it cannot be considered as something violative or something like that. So that is all about freedom of movement. Now coming to the fifth freedom, it is the freedom of residence. Every citizen is free to reside any place of settlement and have a place of settlement within the territory of India. Okay, so according to this right, there are two parts. You can temporarily be in any part of India or you can just have a permanent residence in your domicile. Domicile means um, staying in a place. For example, Karnataka is my domicile because I have stayed here for more than 10 years. So this is my domicile and have a permanent address residence here. So this becomes my domicile. If I wish to go to Chennai and if I wish to stay there for 10 days, yes, I have that freedom to do that also. But what freedom that I do not have is I cannot just walk into my neighbor's home and I cannot just stay there and tell that I have the freedom to stay anywhere I want to stay in India. No, you cannot, uh, you know, breach someone else's privacy and you cannot go to their home and tell that I'll stay here because I have the freedom because that becomes violation to the society and the and the person as well. So that that or that adversity is not discussed in this freedom of residence. So reasonable grounds and restrictions is a person is not allowed to enter certain military camps and their bases as in, as I told in freedom of movement also, that the same thing applies here. A person is not allowed to enter and reside in national parks, biospheres and certain restricted area. That is what I told. You cannot just walk onto a zoo and you, can, you cannot tell that I'll stay here for the rest of my life and you cannot tell this freedom is there for me. I have the adversity to stay that cannot happen because you are causing th threat and you're you know, imposing violence to the society. You can stay in your home and bring peace to yourself and the society as well. You, you should not breach someone else's uh, privacy. That is not a freedom, that is not lawful, and that is not discussed under Article 19. So the last, okay, uh, this is a part of freedom of residence. There was a special status. There was a special status given the, by the presidential order, 1954. Under that Article 35A, uh, it, 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 this, this uh, Article 35A is not existing anymore. This is a historical perspective example, which I thought was uh, important. So I'm discussing it with you. So there was once a special resident rights given to the citizens of Jammu Kashmir that which read that only the citizens of Jammu Kashmir could buy properties and purchase land and sell them and settle there. Rest all the people of uh, India who are, who are were considered as the people of citizens of India could not go to Jammu Kashmir just to buy their property or purchase land that could not happen. But this was recently removed. So this is not uh, practiced anymore. But this is also an example of freedom of residence. So I wanted to discuss this case. So let me repeat it again. There was a special status given by the presidential order in the year 1954. According to Article 35A, 
a special residence rights was given to the citizens of Jammu and Kashmir. What was that right? Is that only the people of Jammu and Kashmir could buy the property, could purchase the land and could settle there. Rest who all were the citizens of India could not go to the could not go to Jammu and Kashmir in the intention to buy a property or to purchase the land. They just could not do that. But this uh, special status was removed recently and this is no longer existing. This is just an historical perspective example which I wanted to discuss under the freedom of precedence as I thought this is one of the examples or the case laws which was good enough to understand the freedom of precedence. So this, this deals with the freedom of precedence and this is all about freedom of precedence. Now moving on to the last, last freedom um, of article 19, this is freedom of profession. So what does that elaborate means? Every citizen, every citizen of India is free to do any occupation or any profession of his choice. He can carry out any trade, he can carry out any business, he or she, by his choice. But one thing is necessary. So you cannot just study BA and you cannot go to a, a, a you know hospital and tell that I, I like to be, a, I wish to be a doctor and I want to be, become a doctor. No, you will have to have the technical idea and the technical degree in that, pro, in that exact profession to pursue uh, and to take up that profession as your life. You cannot complete law degree and you cannot claim to be a you know, doctor or you cannot uh, complete your BA and you cannot uh, just go and tell that you want to be a doctor. No, that is not possible. Any person to choose an occupation to pursue has to have the necessary qualification to practice his or her desired profession. If you want to become a lawyer, you'll have to study LLB. If you want to become a doctor, you'll have to study MBBS. That is what it is. That is the, that is the freedom of profession which India gives to us. But studying a, a you know, not related degree and going to something uh, else does not become a freedom of profession. The profession must be a lawful profession, as in which means you cannot uh, tell that I'm interested in to be a terrorist. I, I am interested to you know, do a smuggling. I want to become a drug dealer. And uh, yeah, of course, you do not have any degrees to become that, but still you cannot tell that and you cannot be, take that as your profession and consider it to be lawful because it is definitely unlawful. One cannot consider smuggling, terrorism, decoity and all those things, which is unlawful in the eyes of law. So this is what freedom of profession deals with. And I guess we are done with all the six freedoms, which, which is discussed under the article 19. So if we read back what the content, Article 19 guarantees all these six rights to all the citizens of India. I mean, you know, more not the point that these freedoms can be enjoyed only by the citizens of India. Right to freedom of speech and expression, right to assemble peacefully without arms, arms as in arms and ammunition, guns and anything which threatens the society. Right to form associations or unions or cooperative society, it should only be lawful. You cannot form a terrorist, you know, terrorism association and tell that I like to be one of it. Uh, no, that is not possible. Right to move freely throughout the territory of India, but you cannot move to the restricted places. You cannot move uh, to a you know military base or you cannot move to something, a security guard place and tell that I have the right. No, that is not possible. Right to reside and settle in any part of territory, in any part of the territory of India. Just because you have right to settle anywhere, you cannot go to a national park and tell that you'll settle there forever. No, that cannot be happening. And right to carry out profession or any occupation. You should be, it should be a lawful profession. So thank you so much for attending today's session. I hope it was worthy, worth your time and worth the knowledge too. Just a moment. Thank you so much and have a great day.